Hey Beer Tubers, Ryan here. Homebrew Wednesday update time. As you can see, I'm in my music room, which has now turned into my fermentation room. Because um, I haven't been playing music lately, so I figure I should put some fermenters here. So on the left here, this is the, uh, the Belgian Pale Ale I brewed with White Labs uh, WLP 500, which is the Chimay strain. And then I pitched Brett Driggs, so... That's been going, I think, three months now, and then I just brewed this up this weekend. Unfortunately, I didn't shoot any footage. Uh, my freezer's sort of full. We'll get to that in a bit. But this is a Flanders Red Ale I brewed. It's only a three-gallon batch, and I'm kind of using the... I don't have my ice bottles in here yet, but I filled up with cool, cool water. Despite doing that, the fermentation took off. I had to put a blow-off tube on it, and uh, it's bubbling all the way down in the bucket. A nice mess here, but uh, yeah, first attempt at a proper, you know, Belgian style authentic sour ale. I used the the Rose Lair uh, blend yeast from Y Yeast, um, three gallon batch. Uh, just used one smack pack, pitched it. That uh, that's a blend of yeast which I believe has uh, Saccharomyces, uh, like uh, I forget, like a sherry yeast strain along with Brentanomyces, Pediococcus, and I think even some Lactobacillus as well. I don't know, it's a big blend of yeast and bacteria. So we'll see how that goes. Fermented real strong. I used my new mash ton for it and hit a gravity a lot higher than I was expecting. I was shooting for around 1060 and I hit 1074. So we'll see how that goes. And let's go check out the other project. Okay, so here's my chest freezer, which I normally do temperature control fermentations. As you can see, it's full of beer. And what we have here is three gallons of meat I made out of orange blossom honey. Uh, three gallon batch. I used six and a half pounds. Yeah, six and a half pounds of or locally uh, produced uh, raw orange blossom honey. So. I've been stirring this up as best I can every day because you can see that see all those bubbles coming up that's all CO2 stuck in suspension in that in the meads which so I heard you have to degas this on a daily basis um, and then feed it some yeast nutrient as you go along so I'm trying to brew, to uh, make a really you know well, I'm trying to do mead right the first ever attempt I'm doing it to make it drinkable so I don't have to wait a year to drink this you know the goal is you know, less than six months if possible. So, uh, it's been going a little over a week right now. And I'll probably give it at least another week, if not two more weeks before I sample it, take a gravity reading and see, see where that's at. So yeah, I finally made a mead. I've been talking about doing that. And there it is. I used the YE Sweet Mead Yeast for that as well. So that's gonna wrap up for uh, Kind of the homebrew update, I do have my quad still in my oak barrel, and I'm going to be kicking that up and balling that soon. So uh, we'll stay tuned and see how that one turns out. Until next time, cheers. Okay, homebrewers, time for part two of my homebrew Wednesday video. I'm going to be doing a little bit of a Hefeweizen showdown. Uh, I was sent this bottle from Chad. Chad's Beer Reviews this is his Weak Night Wheat, 4.8%. And we're going to compare it with my wheat beer, my own... Uh, if a bison, uh, this one's on drafts already got a poured. Let's get Chad's opened and poured, and uh, I'll do a little comparison. They're about the same. Chad's saying 4.8 on his. I think mine came out to be around 4.7 or so was my guess. I uh, My gravity was a little low, so I had a little extra DME to boost it up. So I'm guessing that's where mine finished. So uh, let's get this poured. I've had this a little... A little while, so uh, I figured before Chad uh, retires from reviewing beers, let's do a comparison. So straight away, look at the color difference on these two. I mean, uh, Chad, yours is definitely way darker. Um, I'm guessing your uh, base malt extract is not as light as you'd want. It's probably one of those base malts where they add some uh, caramel malt to it to kind of give it a little more color, a little more flavor, because... I mean, that's all grain. This beer is nothing but wheat. Uh, I think I used G German Pilsner malt and like a touch of something else. I should get the recipe up here right now since I'm at the computer. 
but I mean that's the first thing you notice. His is definitely uh, out of style, color wise. And let's see here. Uh, I used some Victory Malt as well. So mine was 49, or it's hard to tell. I used some rice holes in mine, so my ratios are off. But uh, I used more wheat than more wheat malt than I did uh, barley malt. So both are uh, definitely very hazy beers. Let's get the aroma on Chad's first. Yeah, you can you can tell he's using, I, and we use the same yeast as well. We use the uh, White Labs WLP three hundred, which I believe is the Weinstefaner strain. Yeah, his kind of reminds me of like a Weizenbach a little bit, but because it's got banana, I get a little bit of sweetness, like a little bit of that sweet kind of caramely type of malt coming through. Like hint of clove, maybe like a hint of a little bit of bubble gum, but not much. Definitely some good banana esters coming from his. Let's let's check the aroma on mine. Mine's definitely banana forward, like his, but I I think I think mine might have fermented a little lower. I get a little more fruitiness to it, a uh, little bit touch more hop character. There's like an earthiness in there. Um, I there's a touch of clove and and faint bubble gum as well. But um, I think Chad's is definitely more more banana forward on the flavor. So uh, let's start out with his first. So cheers. Yeah, up front you definitely get that you, you definitely get that twangy extract character to it. Um, I, I think it's lacking a little bit of that wheat character. So I don't know, Chad. Look, look to see what kind of wheat malt you're using. And see, um, it, you might want to use more of that wheat malt extract, and if not all, just wheat malt extract because it does. We, a lot of wheat. I know a lot of wheat malt extract tends to have a little bit of barley malt extract added in because I think your uh, your other whatever other extract you're using is kind of overpowering whatever wheat character you have sweetness up front you know like with some caramel kind of character like I said probably coming through your uh, base malt which isn't probably as light as it could be but the back end you certainly get that yeast character nice banana you know, a little bit of clove, little faint hint of bubble gum. You know, it works. It dries out nicely in the back end. Uh, it, and like I said, it kind of reminds me of a Weizenbach in in, in certain sense. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, I wouldn't call it a traditional Hefeweizen. I mean, you're calling it a wheat. So, um, if you're just going to call it a wheat beer, you know, that kind of works. Uh don't know how close you're trying to go to, you know, being a traditional style here, but it's certainly, you know, unique. It's it's got almost like a, I don't know, almost like a Irish red ale kind of malt character to it, but finished with that traditional German Hefeweizen yeast strain. It's easy drinking stuff, no question about it. So let's try mine. I need another sip here. You know, mine's mine's pr pretty decent. It's, I mean, the, I guess the biggest difference between the two is you can you can tell mine's way more wheat forward. You get that slight bit of like citrus note. There's more of a floral note on the on the malt character. Um, it's definitely lighter. It lacks that sort of extra caramelly kind of character to it. it has a lighter mouthfeel because of that but basically interesting comparing you know two different two different types of brewing extract versus all grain you know uh, same yeast though you probably ferment at different temperatures you can tell mine's a little lower like maybe next time I ferment a little more 
Because I wouldn't mind having a little more banana character on mine. Yours certainly has a little more. So, you know, interesting doing a couple of comparison uh, homebrews here. So, it's going to wrap it up for this homebrew runs day. Cheers. <laughs>